across the electromagnetic spectrum where it's all electromagnetic radiation just of different wavelengths and frequencies. We typically have labels that we give to each of the bands. Now the one that you're most familiar with is the visible part of the spectrum. That's the part of the spectrum that your eyes are most sensitive to. It's in the region of hundreds of nanometers in terms of wavelength. It's also where the sun peaks in its emitted radiation. So the sun peaks in the hundreds of nanometers and our eyes are sensitive to that. And that kind of makes sense that you would evolve eyes that are sensitive to where most of the radiation is to see. Beyond the blue end, you get into the ultraviolet. You'll have heard of ultraviolet radiation, largely in the context of getting a suntan or getting sunburn and with too much exposure, potentially skin cancer. And that's because the ultraviolet electromagnetic radiation has got much more energy. Beyond that, you get into the X-rays and ultimately the gamma rays, where you're going to shorter and shorter wavelengths, higher and higher frequencies, and greater and greater energy in those waves. As a result, because of that increased energy, they typically are more and more dangerous to human beings. If you go to the visible part of the spectrum and you go beyond the, the red part, you get into the near-infrared initially, which on Earth and in Earth observation is mostly reflected near-infrared radiation coming in from the sun. And then if you go to even longer wavelengths, so into microns, we're looking at emitted radiation from the Earth's surface. Because the Earth's surface has a physical temperature on the region of 300 Kelvin, it's emitting radiation. And we can pick that up with thermal imaging cameras or sensors on satellites optimized for looking at thermal wave bands. If you go to even longer wavelengths, we come to a part of the electromagnetic spectrum into the millimeter wavelengths where water vapor actually absorbs so much of it that it has limited use for applications in Earth observation. But as you go to even longer wavelengths, so into centimeter wavelength, we're into the microwave part of the spectrum. And here we're starting to see through the atmosphere more we can start to see through clouds because the water droplets that make up clouds are quite a lot smaller, quite a lot smaller than the centimetre sized wavelengths of the microwaves. As you get to longer microwaves, wavelengths of uh, about 20, 25 centimetres is what your mobile phone uses, it's what GPS systems use. And we also use that in a radar context. And we that's typically refer to as L-band. As we get to longer wavelengths, the longest wavelengths typically that we would use for radar remote sensing are up to about 70 centimetres, so that's about, about that long. And that's a, that would be what we call a P-band wavelength. Going even further, you get to longer and longer wavelengths, you're getting into the domain of the uh, radio part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So devices like this thing in the background here, this is a, a radio receiver, a Marconi phone it's called, and that's designed to pick up uh, longer wavelength signals that can travel a greater distance. 